to the world. Jesus said to his disciples, Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Often I hear it's difficult to raise children in the times in which we live. I don't disagree with that, but imagine from the very beginning, Adam and Eve have Cain and Abel. And Cain kills his brother. David's son rebelled against him. And he would have led a whole insurrection, but as he was fleeing from David's army, he had such long hair he could cut. So he's hanging from this tree by his hair, and he could stab. I mean, I could go on and on about how in Scripture uh, it's not easy to raise kids. And I'm sure each time you probably have said, boy, raising kids in the times we live are very diff is very difficult. So then there's a joy coming in. As I said at the beginning of the Mass, we don't know a lot about them because there's nothing in Scripture about them and then around 125 in a gospel that is attributed to St. James. There's mention in them that they were barren. Now, when, at the time of Jesus, if you couldn't have children, that was considered a curse, especially for the woman, right? The story goes that Anne prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed that she could be fertile. And God answered her prayer because she was going to be the mother of Mary. That's why Anne is the patron saint of women who try to get pregnant. So we don't know a lot about Joe coming in. And how they raised Mary. And if you think Joseph and Mary dealt with the mystery of Jesus as he's growing up, but Joe coming in must have felt that raising Mary, that gift of God, could also be challenging. They were lucky, though, because Mary did not suffer from original sin. The Immaculate Conception means that she was born without original sin. Was she the perfect child, like me? <laughs> I don't know. But we do know that as she grew in age, wisdom, and knowledge, like Jesus grew in age, wisdom, and knowledge, there had to be some bumps in the road. Parents are always concerned that when their children go through the years, especially the teenage years, early 20s, there's going to be some bumps in the road. How the parents deal with it depends on their relationship with their children. The wisdom that you get. Sometimes I, I say in my homily about my father. Um, first of all, both my grandparents on my father's side came from Germany. So this is that whole adjustment to the United States. <clears throat> and they had 11 children. Nine of them reached adulthood. And um, there were only three boys out of the nine, six girls. And my father was a rascal. He was just, you know what they, they say, you, 
what you were, you get. Because my older brother was a rascal. Drove my parents crazy. But my father, and this is what I've told before, my father left school in the fifth grade. He told the nun, I think I started something I can't finish. <laughs> and then, you know, he just did his thing. And um, my grandfather had a, uh, a meat store on East Street in Northside. And one day my father jumps on a huckster truck. You know, huckster's went around selling their stuff. Because he wanted to get out to the North Park. And uh, he fell off the truck. Now this next thing is an adult only comment. And he heard his private parts, and one of his testicles grew real big, and then it went down to the size of a seed. And he was in bed in that for a while. But here's the mystery. With only one testicle, which shortens the opportunity of having a child, he had six. Wow. And I was the second boy, the middle boy. You know, the middle child always suffers. <laughs> not, not, not that I'm whining. <laughs> the middle boy. So the, the mystery of how God works in the lives of parents and children and their connection and how close they get and then they move away for a while and then they come to their senses and get close to you, You've heard it. If it hasn't happened in your life, it's happened in your, other, your relative's life, your neighbor's life. There's an Irish saying that says, when your kids are young, they walk on your feet. When your kids are older, they walk on your heart. And sometimes children bear a great resentment against their parents. And, you know, our parents just really learn how to parent by the way their parents parent them. Especially the older generations. They didn't go to college and take a, a course in parenting. That's why I really want to encourage you today to pray for your parents living in the sea. And ask them they're alive, ask God to really bless them in their senior years, and if they have passed, ask God to forgive their sins and allow them to experience eternal life. So we take a moment here to pray for our parents. Stand down, we'll have our petitions. <laughs> 